Yes, sir, baby, on the radar radio. Yo, special guest in the building. She just bodied that freestyle. Melly is here. What's up? Good. How are you? I'm doing great, and you? That, that shot just kind of kicked in a little bit, right? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I'm chilling now. I saw the I saw the look on your face. I was like, oh yeah, the Casamigos. Well, it's back there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you been? I've been good, you. Great. That's great. It's been great to see you back out and about and yeah. just doing things. Like I've watched all the interviews that you've been doing recently, and it's just been it's been cool to see you back kind of in this yeah. in this mode again. Thank you. I appreciate that. Cause I'm not gonna lie, you had us worried for a while. Yeah. You had us worried. Cause I remember I remember when you were like, oh, I don't like you were like alluding to not doing music anymore. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, she's bugging. I'm like, Melly's the one. Oh, nah, thank you. Nah, but that that time, like, it took me a while to get out of that, like, mode. Mm. Like, self-defeat. It's like, that's what was going on, but I'm back. From, like, like, a mental health perspective, like, what did you, like, what were some of the things that I guess you had to go through just to kind of get your mental space back to that mode where you're like, all right, cool, I'm Melly, I'm her. We gonna, we gonna come back and do what we gotta do. Nah, thank you again. But um, I feel like I had to first go through the motions. I feel like a lot of times we don't allow ourselves to feel. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what I was doing. So every time that I had an inconvenience, I would just be like, fuck. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll you could curse. curse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, fuck all of this. And I feel like um, I wasn't doing nobody else to harm but myself, mm -hmm. you know, as in like with my own growth. And also understanding like, all right, you just quit. Now what? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you going to work on? Like, you just threw everything away. You know what I'm saying? So um, a lot of times it was that that was going on. And also just putting on my big girl pants because not a lot of things are easy mm -hmm. to go through. So when it's a back-to-back -back experience and it's affecting things that you love or you're, what you what I consider my escape, like from, you know, music is like a form of me expressing myself. Mm -hmm. So when it became something I felt like too many hands was on or it was too many pulls in different directions, I kind of just like gave in, but I'm in a better headspace to like really give to self and keep going. I like that. I like what you said where you're like, we have to allow ourselves to feel. Yeah. Because I feel like I've been having that conversation a lot, not just with artists, but like even with my friends, like even going away. Like I was, like I just come, today's my first day back from Houston, but like that week long trip of me not really doing this type of stuff and just kind of like being forced to sit with myself again. It's mm -hmm. like the pandemic yeah, where you're yeah. forced to like really sit with yourself and think about shit and feel shit. And it was like, damn, like, I'm, like, sitting there. I'm like, damn, I haven't felt this. I haven't thought about this. Like, I was angry about this, but I never, like, Knew checked I was, myself yeah, about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the pandemic definitely played a big part in, in that, too. Like, where my headspace is at, I feel like, again, like you said, like, you have time to just sit with yourself and then dive into things that you'll be like, yo, like, I never realized, like, this is why i be triggered by this. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times we like to blame other people, but it's like mm -hmm. sometimes it's, like what you're doing, you're projecting. So it's like, what kind of like, what's reflecting onto you that's triggering you? Yeah, and you and you like notice those triggers and you address them. Of course, yeah. You got to start with yourself, and then everything around you changes. But was like therapy ever a thing for you too, or no? Were you um, into the therapy? I thing? definitely, I've been, uh, I've done therapy, but I can't say that I've been like a consistent like person at all. I can't say that either. Yeah, so I feel like I could always give advice and say, hey, it is great because when you are consistent, like, mm. um. You know, that person's only focused on you. They don't, you know what I'm saying? They always see you to get better type shit. So, like, I I never say, like, don't go, but I'm not. I'm going to be like, oh, I'm pro. You know, sometimes it, it just takes, like, I go through, like, the, the spiritual way. I, like, you know, I self-reflect. I, I see how I treat people. You know, like, I do a lot of things that just can I said, but I do, not to leave out, I, I do talk to my doctor, which is, like, he's also, like, my boy, but also like my therapist in a sense. Mm. He's licensed. Yeah, he's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just any doctor. He's definitely he's also a licensed therapist yeah, too at the same yeah. time. Perhaps. Yeah, I'm definitely the same way. Like I would do like therapy for maybe like a couple months, and then I'd be like, I. Right. Then I would just forget to call or to yeah. go during the. I'll forget to call during the pandemic because it was like on, over the phone, and then I'll just be like, all right, I'm good. And then mm. like a month later, something would bother me, like in the pandemic, where it's like you know sitting with sitting yeah. with your triggers, and mm -hmm. you're just, I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. Doc, I'm like, I got a whole lot of shit that I gotta like talk shit about and unload today because it, it was it's crazy but that's good though because you're self-aware yeah but also i went like reflecting back on that also you're young younger at the time too like mm. you know what i'm saying like yeah. i feel like when, even not even just think about the pandemic but like you know we're talking about 2018 2019 it's like yeah. you know that was the four years ago now you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah. and like when I, whenever we're like young too like i feel like we make those like rash decisions like you know tweeting yeah. some tweeting like in <laughs> your case tweeting that but yeah. <laughs> like yeah. also like we're just like 
you know, ah, fuck this shit. I'm done. I'm done with this. I don't want to do this. Ah, blah, 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 blah. And then you tweet it and then you're like, ah, wait. Yeah. But now that you're older, like also looking back, it's kind of like, why would I, why did I do that? Yeah. Like, why did I tweet that? But I also give myself grace. I also, like, I treat people how I want to be treated. So I always like, when other people have those kind of episodes, I be like, man, who knew what they was going through to right. get to that point? And I always have to put myself in the position. And then also God kind of puts you in those positions where you later understand why those kind of things happen. So yeah. I try to always like, keep an open mind, but I do self-reflect and be like, okay, maybe I I stay put my phone to the side and take these feelings out with myself and just people around me instead of letting like the whole world know. And then if I really feel like this, then take that step. Right. And then also like, you know, it's just, it's looking at that, taking that step, and then just, you know, now have, being more self-aware. And also, like, what I notice is, like, people, we, I guess, you know, we deal with a lot of, like, outside influence, like, with the internet and, like, people tweeting and, like, comments, whatever. And it's also, like, at the end of the day, sometimes you just got to, like, look at that shit and be like, that shit don't matter either mm -hmm. what other people really think. Of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you still going to have the fans at the end of the day. People still yeah. going to fuck with you yeah, regardless. Yeah, that core, that core base, like, fan. And also people, I think, people looking in, on like the artist world and whatever they just got to realize at the end of the day like you're human too like you still go through the same things that like person from down the block goes through you know what yeah. i'm saying they just, but you know they see like the the it's just we the can't prettiness of it yeah like we were limited to what you can respond to like even with comments like i always be like damn like i know anybody not anybody because some people have more self-control than others you know what i'm saying or just the capacity to deal with ignorance more like people lose patience, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes when you're getting tagged, let's say like a hundred times, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. At least for one of you, if you know, if you weaken up, you, you go, you going to fold a little bit, but then it's like, damn, you do feel crazy for responding, but it's just like, damn, it's human shit. Yeah. Ask, ask Rob, Rob, no, because I'd be like, I'd be like, Rob, should I respond to this shit? And I'd be really heated. Something bothered me that morning. So I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna fuck this dude's day up. Like, yeah. <laughs> like for the minute, why you ain't put me on your show yet? I'm like, ah, you don't want to know the answer to that, my brother. No, like, you know no, 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 no. <laughs> but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, things, yeah. but like things like that, or even like looking at like comments, it's just like, it does take a, like a lot of restraint. Yeah. You just be wanting to clap back so quickly and mm -hmm. just like defend yourself. But also at the same time, like people don't deserve your energy. Yeah at all True. but i will say your twitter is very entertaining now <laughs> not because <laughs> you know exactly what i'm about to talk about too oh my god what all right so i'm minding my business right yeah gotta set the guy i gotta set i gotta set the scene so i'm minding my business right on vacation in houston i'm like you know i'm gonna go check twitter today right <laughs> and i go check twitter <laughs> i go check twitter and melly out here wilding on twitter right hold on i'm gonna pull up the tweet because i definitely i definitely have to scroll and get it right <clears throat> Hold on, where's the tweet? Every man got their ass eaten by the girl they love. Love, love, I'm sorry. The girl that they love, love. <laughs> and that's facts. I'm going to put the tweet right here in case y'all think I'm lying too. Because she, this is some real shit th she tweeted. And then she said... You said it's some real shit. Y'all hear that? Y'all immature? No. Y'all immature <laughs> as fuck. A man I knew admired... Am, admitted, admitted. To me, admitted to me that the bitch he loved <laughs> ate his ass, but he hated her guts. And every guy since I asked... Then did she eat your body? And the answer, if they trust me enough, is yes, they did. Yeah. Together. Yo, you know what's crazy? After mad people violated, mm -hmm. and I was letting people talk, because one is like, everything that you tweet it's a good does conversation not... conversation topic, too. No, yeah. no, no, yeah, but that's what it was. That's why I let everybody talk. But it was really a group of us, like my, like my boys and like my girls, we was all in the studio. And then, bro, like we was talking about like, boys getting their booty eaten but i feel like <laughs> let me let me stay on topic because you know like you said casamigos is working but the um the little tweet the little tweet yeah after everybody volley there was a couple of people who then started admitting like oh yeah there was guys like retweeting and y'all can go and check they was like oh yeah when she eat the booty for me that's facts it's got 679 so, quote tweets <laughs> yeah so it was a bunch of people admitting that but you know what it is some people are open to their sexuality some people aren't like sensitive to the topics you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and some people aren't open to it and some people can't get defensive so there's people that got defensive about it who knows why like just go by your day go <laughs> past the tweet and a lot of people that wanted to like put a face to it so they're like oh melly was ear booty though i wasn't we was having a conversation but i've had <laughs> you know i've had an experience where a man said like you know like 
he kept venting about this one particular woman and I'm like, yo, like, do you hate this person or do you love this person? Like, and then when I, like, when he got more into it, he had expressed, like, he's done stuff that he's never done with other women and uh-huh. what, that was one of them and that it gave, like, she got a key to his heart. So I was like, yo, that's a lot of stories for a lot of men that I know, but I don't judge nobody. I was just like, yo, that's probably the, the villa about it. Because mm, so was- that's the G spot for the man. Right. So he was saying that, like, he loved, loved this girl. Yeah. No, and, he he loved her, but then he okay. kept, like, but they weren't together, so he just kept bashing her. So I'm like, yo, I think that oh, you really love this girl. okay, gotcha. Yeah. Because she ate his ass. But, yeah, it's off of experience. Like, they explored in a, in a very sexual, different, you know, exploring sexual ways or whatever. Interesting. And that's what sparked this whole thing. Yeah. So, no, we was, yeah, but we was in the studio talking right, about yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. Interesting. Not me. Okay. I'm, sure, I'm sure. I'm sure. There's somebody out there that I know that this has happened to. Yeah. I feel like what time you'll hear more about it. I feel like I. I you know. Okay. Since we on the topic, I feel like I've seen a lot more people. Stop laughing, Lou. <laughs> I feel mm-hmm. like I have seen more people tweeting about it though. Like aside mm-hmm. from your tweet, I mm-hmm. feel like this has been like a topic that's heavily been discussed on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And everybody got well, like, well, your, yours wasn't a think piece, but like people yeah. be putting like they think pieces about it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's not that deep. If you if if you a guy and you get your ass ate good for you yeah. but if you but if you not you don't jack that then yeah good for you it, it doesn't it doesn't matter at the end of the day people just be taking shit too seriously yeah I, that's what i'm saying there's mad things that i don't really think about and then i'll be like oh like i switch this into this so i have to delete. you know what i'm saying but sometimes i just be smacked it could be lyrics i'll be like ooh, you know <laughs> and then you just think i'm bugging on on twitter but it's like it's lyrics from a song i just once you type it out it's like oh it don't it don't really that don't give the same vibes <laughs> i'm wild it sounded like she had built an auto tune on her voice when she just did that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. musically what type of space you've been in i saw you went to um I saw you went to DR for a little bit, right? Yeah. On like a, a big retreat. I saw you in the studio out there too. Yeah. <laughs> a retreat. A retreat. <laughs> yeah. What type of space you've been in lately? I've been, you know, I've been going to Deja Vu Studios just back in, you know, in the in the Bronx. Like I feel like I had to be, you know, sometimes you go downtown and stuff, it's different vibes, you know, like you go out of Miami, it's different vibes. So I was saying, let yeah. me go to the Bronx, be with the boys, and stuff like that with my my family, my friends and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I just been in the more like getting back to like how I used to do stuff, if that right. makes sense. Like just old kind of vibes, just back to just spitting and not really thinking so much about it, just jamming, vibing out, going into different beats, you know. And I'm very versatile, so I'm not really sticking to just one sound. Mm. So you had to go back to the Bronx to get that feeling, to get that feeling. Back. Yeah, I mean, not even just the Bronx. It was really just be around my friends. I feel like I was in Miami for too long and I'll just be moving around, but I don't feel like I was really with my friends. Like, we'll do stuff, but like, you know, like when you hang out and really be jamming, like, it's always good. Like, I always have my best friend with me and you know, we be like out of town and stuff, but it's different. Like when you come home and like the bros pull up, the sis pull up or like the sis that's always working be like, oh, like I'm off today and pull up to the studio, you know? And plus, my best friend be sleeping in the studio, so it's like when I'm jamming, I'll be like, until I gotta wake up. She says it's not her. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nah, she out. be out. <laughs> you can't yeah. hang at all? You want some casa? You good? No. <laughs> I was like, I was like, she gonna sleep here? She gotta wake up. No, no, no. She be, be tired because I'll be in the studio mad late to like the morning. Mm. Yeah. I can't do that. You be gonna leave when the sun come up? I try to go early, but like for some reason, I feel like my brain just like powers up at a certain time. Like when it's that don't that don't happen to you? Like you get really like active at a certain time. I think I like at like twelve thirty I get like a burst of energy and yeah. then by like two, three in the morning I'm done. That's my energy. You sound like yeah. ash right now though. I ain't gonna lie. For real? <laughs> Some ash shit. Yeah, we, we are <laughs> spontaneously impulsive too. Yeah. So that make probably makes sense. Ash is definitely up at six in the morning. Yeah, I'll be up for no reason. Too. <laughs> Ask him about Houston last year. And, uh, up at 6 a.m. with the TV dumb loud. I'm nah, like, that's mad rude. <laughs> mad rude. Mad rude. He had like Ozark on or some yeah. shit. I'm, I'm in the bedroom right above. Hearing so I'm everything. Like, I'm, like, I'm like, bro. And then in Philly, too, you have the TV. Oh. <laughs> so I, I can't go. I can't go. I can't go on vacation. You start Ash. the day. Period. He, he, you know the video, like the girl, like I ain't getting no sleep because of yeah, y'all. Yeah, that'd be Ash. But that, but that'd be him. But he, de- he dead slept, and I didn't. <laughs> so he be coming. But what my you room. be doing? Oh, cause you be hearing it. That's yeah, cause he, cause he be keeping, he be keeping me up with the fucking TV. So you live in Houston? What? No, I don't live in Houston. Oh, cause you I like just, Texas, Texas. I just like no. Texas. Oh, I love it too. It's fire. 
So you went to? Did you get to do music out in DR too? Like, yeah, I did music. Get back into doing some more Spanish stuff. Yeah, I did music. I did a song with um with Nephi. Okay. It's called Tirame with our like home producer kind of vibes. Mm-hmm. So it was him. Like he was just doing vibes and stuff. And then we just went out there and we knocked that song out. But that's a part of like his stuff. Mm. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you're gonna lean more into the Spanish stuff like moving forward now? Like, what are your kind of what kind of headspace are you in with that? I feel like I'm going to always be balanced because I feel like um, usually when I'm in the studio, I just go off a of feeling. Mm-hmm. And w- most of the time, like if I feel like it's Spanish, that's going to come out as Spanish, but I don't force it. So I feel like I am kind of going to do more Spanish, but not forcing it. Yeah. I feel like that world is so dope, especially for you to like lean on to. Because I just feel like, unlike the hip hop world, like Spanish artists, like really, they fucking support each other. Yeah. I feel like they support each other everywhere. I feel like there's there's always little scandals, there's always little disagreements, but I feel like everybody always has like their people that they support. And you always see that unity sometimes, you know? Yeah, but I just feel like I see it more when it comes to the Spanish music. Spanish? Yeah. I think it's just, I don't know, I think it was like, I think we're, what made me think that too, and what, what kind of like got me there. Obviously people don't like each other in every genre, right? That happens yes. everywhere. But I, fe- I just felt like when I would see like, I don't know, like back in the day before Bad Bunny was Bad Bunny, like the Bad Bunny we know in like this day and age, yeah. right? I would see like everybody under his comments section, or even if you go to like We Seen and Yandel, you go to their, mm-hmm. everybody's there. You know, obviously Daddy Yankee, Daddy Yankee, everybody mm-hmm. don't support him regardless. But like I would see that when I followed all of them, I'd be like, damn, like you don't always see that with with hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why, but maybe it's a little more pride involved. But I definitely, but I definitely see like the Spanish community. The Spanish community is really tight when it comes to their music scene and how they support each other and plus i mean you kind of see it like pay off too at the end of the day i mean how much money did bad bunny make in september like that shit is fucking crazy now i feel that i feel like a lot of times it's not that in hip-hop we don't support each other because i feel like the acknowledgement is there sometimes like even if people feel like yo i'm the best which everybody's like uh, entitled to say that i feel like love is still shown Mm -hmm. and even if it is in like in groups or if it's just like a, a a you know a general kind of thing I, I still feel like love is shown but the only difference is that um i feel like with the spanish um side of things they don't there's something about like just us in hip-hop it's not like we feel like we better than anybody and stuff like that i really right. feel like it's like on some like for example like new york is like you could be in a you could be performing if they fuck with you they fuck with you but it's sometimes even hard to know if a new yorker like fucks with you you know what i'm saying so yeah. i feel like that's that's the attitude in a sense if i was to compare of what it is yeah i mean that's why artists be like when artists come here from out of town too and i talk to them and they got shows they be like i'm scared i'm like why are you scared and they like they like new york is tough and i'll be like we are and i'll be thinking about it. i'm like yeah like because yeah. <laughs> people i mean you see people from out of town come here do shit and then they get booed off stage no all some the time. sometimes they just be too cool that's all it is that's that what too. I'm people to don't want to turn up also mm. no not even i feel like new york do be turned but i feel like i'm what i'm trying to say is that we don't do too much so sometimes it could come off as like somebody feeling or doing too much for another person but in reality that's what we're trying to limit the yeah. whole time so then it might come off in a bad way yeah it's, it's an energy thing you know it's like mm-hmm. someone from the west coast comes here and they're like oh i wonder what new york's gonna be like and then they yeah. meet somebody from new york and it's like we fuck with you yeah we just chilling. but i just yeah i'm just i'm just chilling we're just chilling I'm chilling drinking that's it you know i saw that uh it was funny you tweeted about yeet right mm-hmm. and it oh, was yeah. about how people like, whoever you were with i don't know yeah, who you were yeah. that time, but they was like like oh why would you put on that yeet and then you put the on and people was fuck with. i've been trying no, to tell people this shit. no not even i i we were smoking and i guess they thought i was like i don't know but i turned around i'm like put yeet and then they all looked at me and started laughing and i'm like what <laughs> and then i was like just play it and when they played we was all like this and then i looked back and they was like Oh, he's fire, but we knew it was going to be around this vibe, but we didn't know it was that fire. I was like, yeah, he's fire. Yeet is tough. Yeah, he's fire. It's that whole, like, underground scene that's kind of like, he's, well, not he's, like, spearheading, but, like, he's, mm-hmm. like, kind of becoming, like, quickly, like, the face of, and, like, that whole music scene is just is nuts right now, too. Yeah, I fuck with it. I feel like, um, in a sense, like, he's very unique, mm-hmm. but he kind of brought back, a, like, it was like a... I don't know if it was not 2016, like around there. I don't know, like when 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 Uzi and all them came out. Yeah, like when Future was doing Monster and stuff. I think it's a combination of like that whole kind of feel. 
I think that feels coming back now too. Yeah. I be, I've been telling people this for months that like the the feel that people got back then like that because like right now obviously what's what's hot has been like trap drill whatever but I feel like that that sound that like he does and that yeah. like a lot of those guys doing that space like the anybody who goes on lyrical lemonade who has a video on lyrical lemonade like even Yachty with with the Poland song like that shit went hard. That shit fire. Yeah. <laughs> even with that like coming back around, I think that like the SoundCloud like the the wave that I feel like. I came up with come came up in and even like you came up in too because mm -hmm. that was during that time 2018 2017 mm -hmm. like I feel like that's about to come back around too which is why I think it's kind of yeah. it's kind of like perfect for you to be mm -hmm. back and doing this now too because like oh it's the second coming of the SoundCloud era and shit like that yeah and okay now we could all have fun with it have again fun with it, yeah. yeah I think that's what's missing people need yeah, to have fun, fun. With, people need to have fun with music again not take shit so seriously at the same time yeah I feel like that's what what I broke into like I. I just want to put out music and just whatever. Because I feel like I know like my fan base, like they fuck with me. So it's like, mm -hmm. we just be chilling, jamming. That's what I, the vibes I'm going for. I don't want to match everybody else because then I'm going to lose myself in that transition, you know? Do you feel like that was kind of like the point that you was trying to make with the Medusa EP too? What do you mean? Like, is that what you wanted with when you put that project out? Like, was that the intention? Yeah, like I did any, yeah, that was really it. I feel like, um... I feel like you always have to think about um, structure. You always have to think about like sonically matching a song to another one. And I feel like with Medusa, I didn't really think about it. Like, was, people would be like, oh, it's an album. But to me, I was like, let's just put together these songs, an uh, EP. Like, that's an EP. Right. I just want to put something out so that at least it's there. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, I've been working like on more stuff which i'm gonna drop like another pack you know what i'm saying i'm treating it like packs just giving because i feel like um one of my things was like inconsistency or just not just not giving right back to back you know mm -hmm. and beating that like kept, like i feel like once you get out of like that once you get into that inconsistent mode it's so hard to kind of like mm -hmm. break back into the consistent mode not because like you can't do it it's just mm -hmm. like it's like you start overthinking everything you're like oh i gotta be consistent yeah. but like now i gotta it, and what is what i'm making up to my standard, mm -hmm. standards, is it up to the standards of what my fans were yeah. used to from me before the pandemic? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, I'm sure that's also kind of like running through your mind, but you're, I feel like, you know, you're starting to get back into like the- No, that's the why people, people sometimes end up not, like a lot of artists, people don't see it because sometimes like machines will push you to release something. Mm -hmm. But in reality, like sometimes once you take that inconsistent, like stop or whatever, you start thinking like, damn, I already took- uh, this amount of weeks or these amount of days, so I'm gonna have to come with something hard in, and everything you make is better than the other. So now yes. you, now you stuck on what you're gonna pick, and then you, you just overthinking everything. Yeah, and I forgot who said it. Somebody was here, and they said they're like, yo, you, um, they're like your biggest hit is probably sitting on somebody's hard drive. Yeah, because artists overthink too much, and it's funny because it's like it'll be like the I don't know if this is the same for you with some of your bigger records, but like it'll be like I, a lot of people will come here and they'll be they'll tell me, oh yeah, my biggest song, I don't even really like it. It's just, it just happened to become my biggest song. No, yeah. Or not that they didn't like it, but it was not like if you put together a list of all their songs and they would be like, out of all the songs that I thought was going to be my biggest record, this was like the bottom of the list. You yeah, because most of those records aren't really done like you thinking about, oh, is my team going to like it or the fans going to like it? Those kind of records are done like, like how did I see yeah. I like did it at the end of the night, just joking around, messing around with my voice, going, ooh, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> and just talking shit. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is the first one we're coming out with. And I wasn't too like pleased with it. I was like, yo, it is what it is. Sometimes like the simpler things go. Mm. So now that, you know, you mentioned like the machine, right? So obviously now that you're free to do what you want, you don't have like, you know, a machine like mm -hmm. bugging you about shit, right? Um, how are you like, what, what do you feel like is like the easiest part of it now? And what do you feel like is the most difficult part of it being independent in the space that you're in right now? Nah, to be honest, my, um, like there's always an intake like on machines and stuff like that. I feel like just for um, the space that I was in, mm -hmm. um, a lot of things we didn't like know how to like navigate, but the machine in itself, like my label was never like dickheads or mm -hmm. nothing, you know, like they was always like, who shit just like you know just the what what I meant by that was like sometimes like artists we all drop on the same day or we have Facts. to meet certain deadlines so it's their job to like for you to like reach that you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so as an artist sometimes even though we're given that freedom to like do the records mm -hmm. we still have that deadline in our in the end of our heads so it could change mm -hmm. the way that we're actually doing everything but other than that I feel I feel like I'm I'm free to do whatever you feel me like I'm to do whatever um, with a distribution and stuff like that that's why i'm like i just want to put out packs 
I just want to, like, just put, because, like I said, I've been sitting on my songs. It's like, right. they're just going to keep getting older. So I just want to take things out and then go touring, because that's really what I want to do. Like, if I had an option, I'll just tour, like, all my life, literally. <laughs> you like True. touring? Um, I don't like what it comes with, but I love being on stage. I love connecting. I love seeing, like, yo, mm -hmm. like, like there's love like you feel me like that love is different when you're in the stage and people singing your records or like my fans usually they be giving me gifts you know i love gifts but i just love them you know like when people think about you like oh that's crazy like you really thought about me type shit you know so it's dope like connecting with different people and seeing how they connect with you is there a specific gift from a fan that you remember like more than one that i do remember i don't know um I don't know how to explain it, but she I know she waited for me in a in a parking lot and it was like a CBD thing. It was like a pack of just like my CBD stuff and she made the the tags on it, like with her and me. Oh. Yeah, in Connecticut. And then she wrote me a letter and um before that she was turning up with me like crazy in the club. So when I, when she finally came out, I was like, oh, you was you was fucking it up. But then outside, you came with gifts. Like, you know, so it was like, oh, shit, like, this is my bitch. Shout out to her. Yeah, you shout are. out to Connecticut? her. Connecticut? Yeah, in Connecticut. I love that. So what's next? What's the next pack for you? When do you think you're going to come out with it? Um, The next pack should be coming soon. Like, I was just in the studio because we usually just knock out mad records and stuff. And we just been like looking through them, trying to see like what um, was. Sometimes I'll leave like records halfway because it's like just ideas and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to see like okay, like what's what's a vibe right now? What I just could take out. I feel like it's getting cold. It's, it's a vibey season right now. Yep. Some fall music for the fall. Exactly. So coming soon. Yeah. Well, I can't wait for that, and I'm glad that you're back. You know what I'm saying? Um, thank you. Congratulations on everything and being back, and I'm excited to see what you do next. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. So before we get out of here, uh, let the people know where they can follow you at. Anything else you want to let your fans know, now is the time to do it. This camera right here. Right here? Right here. Right here. Is it girl Melly? Follow me at M-E-L-I-I. -I. All platforms. Stream Medusa. Stream Winter in New York. Cartier. Y'all already know. Holla at your girl. There you go. Make sure you go follow her. Go run up Medusa out now. Go run up that freestyle out now. Yeah. If the new pack is out by now, go run that up too. Make sure you go <laughs> follow her. Go show her some love. Go show her some support. Love and support is free, but y'all already knew that. Till next time, on the radar, Melly, we out. Boom.